Okay, so uh, a little while ago, I picked up this uh, traffic light uh, from an antique store for a decent price. And I don't know, I've always wanted a traffic light and I thought it would maybe make a neat uh, addition just to have hanging here uh, somewhere in the shop. And uh, because it had uh, the one uh, red light and then it actually had, when we got it, had two uh, green lights and they were the uh, This is one of them here. This is another one that I took apart and they were the clear uh, Plastic whereas the red light was the tinted uh, plastic. They were still both green uh, this one and and this one but they were uh, uh, The clear plastic so I was able to find fortunately interest and interestingly enough this all of the lights in here were already um, LED. And so I was able to find on eBay uh, for not, for like 20 bucks a piece, uh, yellow, and then the uh, green replacements. Um, but there's literally nothing in here. Uh, it came wired with this plug. Um, I added in the, uh, the Wango connectors here just for testing because it had some cheesy wiring on it, but there's nothing in there. They were just all on and I took one of the ones apart because I was curious so it's just the Lens that sits on there uh, and it's glued on otherwise it's basically com completely sealed and these of course run off 120 Volts, so that's the LED module. That's basically uh, the heatsink, and then the power supply, which is converting the 120 to uh, 12 volts. And this just sits sits in there like that. And so I'm not entirely convinced that these are necessarily designed for continuous use, meaning that I don't think the lights are designed to be on 100% of the time. And plus, it's a traffic signal, so, you know, just having all the lights on at the same time doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, uh, I'm going to make up a circuit that will convert or that will control each of the lights in a normal sort of traffic signal uh, scenario. And then the other thing... Uh, I need to do is figure out how to mount it. It doesn't have any of the uh, mounting hardware. It's just these holes on the top and the bottom. And what I think I'm going to do is take a couple of these uh, knee clamp flanges and drill and tap some holes to put those on there. And then I can then use uh, pipe uh, just regular galvanized or, or black pipe to actually make a mount. And the advantage of using these, at least for this part, is that'll give me the ability to uh, be able to adjust the light back and forth, back and forth by just uh, loosening the uh, the set screw there. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I've got I've marked it. I think I've got enough material there. I think this is either cast aluminum or something I'm not entirely sure uh, but I think there's enough material there it's fairly thick um, so we'll see what see what that does it's not it's not incredibly heavy uh, but it's not necessarily light either uh, so yeah so make up a control circuit to control the lights uh, and then the mounting uh -huh. Thank you. 
All right, so I'll explain the, um, the controlling circuit for the traffic light here. It's not complicated. Um, there's not a whole lot going on. I didn't even draw up a schematic uh, for it, but I'll just sort of go over what uh, the components are and sort of the idea behind it. But uh, the first thing is the microcontroller. I used a ATtiny85 to actually control the uh, SSRs for the lights to turn them on and off uh, when I wanted to, according to the programming. Now, there are probably well, dozens, if not hundreds, of examples of using uh, things like a 555 timer, more discrete components, to make uh, traffic light controllers. And those are fine, um, and I thought about going that route, but because I wanted the different modes, uh, the flashing modes and, th and things like that, even though this will probably only be in the uh, standard sort of traffic light mode, um, I... I prefer to implement those sorts of things in software rather than hardware. Um, it's easier for me. Um, and I think it just make, actually kind of makes more sense, uh, especially when the, uh, the ATtiny 85 uh, is only a couple bucks and they're easy to use. They don't require, it doesn't require an external clock. You feed it three to five volts and it just uh, chugs along and does its thing. So uh, that's why I use the, uh, the ATtiny 85 microcontroller instead of going uh, like a 555 timer or something else in order to uh, do the actual on-off action of the lights. Really the only other component on uh, the board is the current limiting res resistors for the uh, three SSRs for the red, yellow, and green lights. The uh, lights themselves actually only use uh, 60 milliamps or require 60 milliamps. That's all they're drawing, which is surprising because, you know, you think, you know, industrial, big industrial light, you think they would actually uh, be drawing more, but it's actually nice that they don't because it makes controlling them easier. Um, so these uh, SSRs are good for uh, up to 120 milliamps, which is nice. That's a margin of of error, I guess, that I like. And I thought about going with um, uh, mechanical relays just to get that clicking uh, as the lights were being switched. I thought that might be fun, but one, implementing a, a mechanical relay, you know, you have to add components and stuff, uh, transistors and that to control them with uh, the ATtiny, and the clicking might be annoying after a while. The novelty might wear off. Uh, only other thing on the board is this capacitor. Um, I always put a capacitor uh, on the power rail um, when I have a microcontroller just to help, even though I tend to use decent uh, power supplies and they're stable, uh, I always like putting a capacitor there just to make sure things uh, keep, keep, keep going. Um, speaking of power supply, uh, this is a five volt uh, power supply. I don't remember the current rating, but it's not very much. Uh, actually, I think it's an amp. Um, and I got this on DigiKey. I'll put uh, part numbers for the relays and the power supply. Those are really the only two things that I think matter uh, in that regard. Um, I'll put part numbers either in the description or they'll be linked uh, to on the, uh, the, the post on the website uh, for this, which I'll also linked down below. So anyway, so uh, five volts, one amp power supply. And um, that's basically it for the major components. There is, so the, the power comes in here and this is 120 volts. Um, so danger, Will Robinson, uh, there is line voltage in here. Um, don't kill yourself if you do something like this, please. Uh, and in any case, I'm not responsible. But 120 volts in, it goes through this um, uh, uh, circuit breaker, um, and that's a one and a half amp circuit breaker. So any more than that, that'll trip. Just keep things on the, on the side of safety. Um, that connects to the terminal block, and then that breaks off one to the input for the power supply. The power supply powers, the only thing that that's powering is the uh, microcontroller and of course the relays. Um, and that, so that's not doing anything else except powering the, uh, the microcontroller. And then uh, the rest of the wires for the 120 volts or the line voltage coming in, go off to lights. Uh, the uh, neutral wire, they terminate up there and a little uh, terminal block, common terminal block. And then the hots from each light terminate here in these terminal blocks, which are where the relays uh, terminate to control them. So yeah, um, oh, and then the, uh, the mode button is right here, which I can reach uh, behind the, uh, the lights to control the different modes. And then um, 
maybe perhaps unnecessary because if I end up uh, turning this on and off with any regularity, I'll probably just uh, get a smart plug or something and control it with the rest of the shop lights with Alexa, but uh, this is an on and off button. But the only thing, it's a soft off. So uh, if you flip this uh, in the off direction, it just tells the microcontroller just to keep the lights off. So everything else would still run. So it's just a soft um, software based off. So, um, but you know, if I just need to turn it off the lights for some reason quickly, then that's there. Um, so yeah, so that's basically it. Like I said, not complicated. Um, the most complicated thing is probably, I don't know, it's not complicated. Programming it, maybe. Um, this is sort of a, it's programmed as a state machine. Um, I'll, of course, link the code uh, below. Um, but it's just a state machine. Um, and the only reason why it's that complicated is because I always, 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 always avoid using delays. You could implement this about five seconds, especially just the regular traffic light mode. Um, if you are okay with using the delays. I've basically decided uh, decided a while ago that I will never, unless it's just so, something really super simple and maybe a one-off or something like that. I mean, of course this is a one-off, but anyway, uh, I just, I don't uh, use delays when I'm programming uh, microcontrollers or Arduinos um, or, or their variants, just because it makes things really hard to uh, control. This is all based, this entire traffic light, and most things that you do actually with the, with, um, with traffic light, or with uh, with microcontrollers, most projects are, have something that you're timing, um, that you're basing in, in, that you have to m watch or record time. And if you use the delay um, in, in it, in your programming, then that almost becomes impossible or just way easier just to then just, you just go to other methods. And a state machine, um, in my experience, has been one of the best ways to, to sort of implement that. I didn't implement this one particularly well. Uh, each, um, the red, uh, yellow, and gr or red, green, and yellow are each separate state machines rather than being one state machine that just, anyway. Uh, you look at the code and you'll you'll get the idea of what I mean. It's not not the best implementation. I'm not not the best uh, programmer, but uh, it works. Anyway, I've been rambling, so um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. So, at some point in the video, are you going to address that you can still open the panel? I don't think so. No. Um, I mean, it's. I think it's obvious. I can still open it, not all the way, but enough to be able to get to the breakers right. and see which one is which. I mean, if I have to get inside the panel, take the cover off or whatever to add a breaker or something, I'll probably have to take the light down because I get to this screw right here. Yeah. Um, maybe, but it's obviously it's not OSHA approved. But what is in the shop?